Welcome everyone to 6.1 inverse functions. This section is nice. It's a little bit of a half and half review for people who remember their algebra and then some new stuff. How do we take derivatives of inverse functions? All right, so let's get to it with a definition. So we say a function f is called a one to one function if it never takes on the same value twice. So one way we can write this down mathematically is that f of x1 is not equal to f of x2 whenever we input different values. So that's x1 is not equal to x2. And so let's draw a quick picture over here. I'm going to draw the function x squared. And the claim is that this is not a one-to-one -one function. So that means I can find two different values, x1 and x2, that output the same f value. So they have the same height, and yet x1 and x2 are different, right? These obviously are not the same values. One's negative, one's positive. Okay, we may remember something called the horizontal line test back from our good old algebra days. And it says that a function is one-to-one -one if and only if no horizontal line intersects the graph more than once. Oops, there we go, once. Let's go back and look at this. We can see if we drew this horizontal line at this height, it intersects twice. So this function is not one-to-one. -one. But notice there are some horizontal lines that work. Here's one that doesn't hit at all. Here's one that hits once. But it's no horizontal line intersects the graph more than once. OK, and the big reason why we like one-to-one -one functions is that it claim, the claim is, is that for these things, we can find inverse functions. So if we have a one-to-one -one function, domain A, range B, then it's inverse function. And we're going to denote this with an f and then a superscript, negative 1. f to the negative 1, this maybe you remember from algebra. Uh, notice that the domain and the range, they flip. So now it's domain B, range A. And this is defined as, well, if you plugged in y, you would get out x, if and only if f of x is equal to y. So again, you can kind of see these things flip. So they get you back to what you started. And again, since the domain of the inverse is b, this is for any y in b. This remark here is just saying what I've already verbally said, the domain and the range, they flip. So the nice thing, based on this definition, is that you can kind of cancel functions with their inverses. So these are the cancellation equations. It says if we apply the inverse function to the function itself, these things cancel and you get x, no matter what x is in a. All right, and the second equation is that if you apply f to f inverse, again, it cancels for any x in b. So how do we figure out the inverse functions? Well, the first thing you need to do is write down y equals f of x. So everywhere you see an f of x, you need to change that to a y. And now we're going to solve this equation for x in terms of y, whenever possible. And then we want to express f of f inverse as a function of x. So we're going to interchange x and y. And then the resulting equation is y equals f inverse of x. All right, so let's try it out here on this nice example. We're going to try to find the inverse of this cubic function, x cubed plus 2. So the first thing, every single, everywhere I see an f of x, I'm going to write y. Check. Then I'm going to solve this equation for x in terms of y. So in order to do that, let's subtract 2. And then we're going to take the cube root to kind of cancel that cube. So it's the cube root of y minus 2. And now we've successfully solved for x in terms of y. So then we're going to go ahead and interchange x and y. So my next line will be something like, This cube root of x minus 2 equals y. And then that is the inverse function. So let's go ahead and just write this. f inverse of x is equal to the cube root of x minus 2. OK. And actually, let me uh, sketch a picture here. Let me use technology to move this over. 
and I'm going to try to draw a quick graph of the function and its inverse. Because the claim is, this remark below, is that the graph of f inverse is obtained by reflecting the graph of f about the line y equals x. So if I wanted to graph the cube root of x minus 2, well, I can graph this as x cubed plus 2. So it's a nice cubic, but it's been shifted up 2. And then I'm going to draw the line y equals x. Here we go. And then I'm going to try to do my best to draw the inverse function. So I'll reflect this across the line y equals x. So that point's going to be there. And let's see, it crosses here. And so it'll look something like this. This should be the f inverse function. And then the final thing I want us to notice is these uh, couple points that I had really made bold here. This one, 0, 2 on my blue function is 2, 0 here. So if you reflect those, it's the same thing as switching the x and the y coordinates. All right, and that is the end of the review material for 6.1 inverse functions. Let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to go ahead and move into how do we take the derivative or find the derivative at a point for our inverse functions. I'll see you then.